Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video what I wanted to talk to you about is the number one biggest myth about getting your first job as a self-taught programmer. And this comes from my experience of coaching and mentoring people who are looking to make a change and get into this field, and I've seen this one thing, this one phenomena come up quite a bit, and it's led to a lot of missed opportunities or people spending way too long in the job hunt. Maybe they don't even end up getting a job at all. So I wanted to bring this myth to the light and help you avoid some of the pain and misery and maybe get into that job a little bit faster. Now, if you're wondering who I am, who the heck is this guy talking about getting your first job as a self-taught programmer? Um, like I said, I'm Andy. I am a self-taught programmer. I taught myself to code back in 2014. I landed my first job in 2015 doing full stack web development. And right now I'm doing mentoring and coaching to people who are looking to get into this field. People from all backgrounds, people who have no computer science degrees or anything like that. So I focus a lot of my channel on how to cultivate the skill sets, how to study better, how to land that first job, like different strategies and tactics you can do to actually get your first job. So I'd highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So let's get right into the myth here. So the biggest myth that I see as far as getting that first job is that you can only apply to jobs where you know that specific technology or programming language, right? So a lot of you guys, maybe you picked up a random programming language. I think a common one is Python, right? So say you, you started learning Python and you learn it to a really large degree and now you're gonna go out there and try to get a job. Well, at that point, you may say to yourself, I can only look for jobs that are picture perfect for what I know. I know Python, I've worked maybe a little bit with some web development, I can only look for jobs like that. And so you end up looking at a very small pool of jobs. You never look outside of those pools of jobs because you're like, well, if it says something about Java or C Sharp or JavaScript, I can't possibly know that. And this is a bad decision because just to kind of give you a sense of what I've seen as far as people actually getting their first jobs, I've seen people get hired for a programming language they didn't even know. So think about that. That means that somebody didn't know a certain programming language and they got hired to do a job in that programming language. How does that work? Well, recently I've had this happen with somebody. They went to a job interview. They didn't really know what it was gonna be about. They had kept the job posting very generic, very general. And so they showed up and they were immediately asked about Java, questions specifically about Java, specific technical questions about Java. This person who I helped coach and mentor had no experience in Java. They had worked with Python, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, they built applications, but they had never come across Java. So he didn't do very well in that part of the interview. Now, lucky for him, they still actually brought him back for a second interview. There's something about him that they liked, and he actually ended up getting hired for a Java developer position which is crazy because again, he has no experience in it. He had very, very little experience, let's put it that way. Now, is this person really intelligent? Is he just like a you know 150 point IQ or something like that? And the answer is no, he does not have an high IQ. But what he had done is he had showed the company a track record of learning on his own. He had shown a track record of starting projects and finishing them. And he also showed them that he had knowledge and skill in other programming languages and other technologies that they could they, he could possibly contribute at their company. So they were willing to take a risk on him and it's worked out very well for them. It's worked out very well for him. And that's not a completely uncommon story. The companies are not necessarily dead set on hiring a specific type of developer. One of the most common complaints I hear from people who are trying to get in this field is that every job posting that they come across it's asking for the sun, the moon, and the stars, meaning it's asking for every programming language possible, it's asking for 10 years experience for an entry level position. And this is where it can cause a lot of confusion for people like yourself who are trying to get hired. So let me kind of clarify here why this happens. So if you see a job posting on monster.com, LinkedIn, wherever, maybe on a company's website, and you see it listed out as, you know, we're asking for this, three years experience in that, this programming language, this technology, that posting may have been created by someone in HR, somebody who has no experience or no knowledge, no technical knowledge of software development or programming. They have, may have talked briefly to a software developer, a manager, who wants to hire a new software developer. And so they may have taken information from them and then written a job posting based on what they think they heard in that conversation. And so then that's where they're gonna say, we are bare minimum, we're asking for this, that, and the other. And that's the way that most jobs work. 
But in software development, it's not always so binary. It's not always so black and white. Sometimes they're looking to hire someone as a software developer, but they're looking for a wide range of candidates, but they also don't want it to be such a wide range that it, you know, thousands and thousands of people apply for it. So it is not always as clear as it may seem. What I recommend for people who are going out there and gonna start applying for jobs is don't limit yourself to a narrow set of what you think you can get as far as a job. Don't say, well, I know Python and front end, so I have to look for this exact job posting that's gonna match 100%, right? Like it can be close enough. It can even be in a programming language that you don't even know. And you may ask yourself like, how does that possibly work? If I don't know Java, why would I apply for a Java job? Well, here's the assumption I'd be making for all of you guys who are listening. My assumption is that you've spent a great deal of time learning the fundamentals of programming. In the last video that I put out, I talked a lot about, it was entitled the number one thing you want to learn as a self-taught programmer. And it really revolves around understanding how the logic of an application works, how to create the recipe, follow steps so that the computer program can produce the desired output. That's like the, the complicated way of saying it. And learning syntax is very important. You definitely have to do that to become a programmer, but most programming languages just differ in syntax and some of the rules and internal workings of the actual programming language. So for you as a software developer to get a job in a programming language that you have no experience in, if you can show a track record, if you can show that you've learned things very quickly, that can tell the potential employer that you are hireable because you can learn it, you can pick it up quickly and you can build applications for them. So you wanna make sure whatever you decide to do, whatever programming language you decide to learn, make sure you create projects. You can show an employer that you've done things, that you've completed projects, you've done it on your own, you've learned things on your own, and that's gonna give them the confidence to say, okay, I think this person is somebody who can hire. I think some of you guys also need to remember a very fundamental principle about getting hired for a job. The only way you're gonna get hired for a job at a company is if that company thinks that you, as a human being, can provide value to their company. You can increase their bottom line. Companies don't exist without making money. I know it may be a shocker to some of you guys. So there's companies aren't just out there looking to see who's qualified for a job and just gonna start handing out money. They have to look at you and the, the entire thing that you bring to the table and say, I think this person can bring so much value. Our product will make 10 times more money or at least you know 1.5 times more money or something reasonable like that. So you always want to make sure that that's the thing that you're focused on, not knowing a programming language inside and out, but how can you contribute to this company? How can you step in on day one and provide value, whether that's you bring something to their culture, whether you are just a good person, you're positive to be around, you're helpful, you work on a team very well, your skills are up to the level where they're not gonna have to baby you. All those things matter. It's not a binary thing like you can program or you can't program. There are other things that companies are looking for that contribute to their bottom line of making money. So last thing here, I'll just say this just to reiterate what I'm saying in this video. Don't limit yourself to a narrow subsect of jobs that you can apply to. Open it up a little bit, meaning that try to find jobs that even maybe ask for things that you don't feel comfortable with. The worst thing that can happen, you apply to a job, you never hear back. Even worse maybe for some of you guys, you go to a job interview and they say, we really like you, but we're really looking for something very specific here. No harm, no foul, you can walk away without any bruises on your body. But don't feel afraid to apply for something that you're not 100% qualified for. You can reach a little bit on this. So I hope this video is helpful. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Uh, also leave some comments if you agree or disagree. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got for today. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, peace out.